Um, I mean, basically, it's the same. I mean, you've still got to be able to defend, uh, still got to be able to pass the ball, still got to be able to head the ball. Um, probably the difference between myself and Matthew now, I think, is that virtually every week I had a winger. Um, you know, throughout, a, say, a, a 42 game season, I'd probably have 37 wingers to mark. Uh, Stevie Coppel, Laurie Cunningham, uh, Gordon Taylor, the um, uh, PFA chairman, who's a good player. Uh, Gordon Hill, uh, you know, every single week I'd have a, I'd have a wing at the mark. And so my job would be really, um, if I could stop him, job done really, and then hopefully he gets substituted or yeah. carried off. Yeah. <laughs>I think it is a lot different. Um, we a lot of teams tend to play diamond and diamond in the middle of the pitch, and a lot of the wingers go inside nowadays. Like for example, Silver, he plays on wide left, but he's always coming inside, stuff like that. And um, you get the odd team that has wingers, like Valencia, for example. I played against him earlier in the season, and he's an out and out winger. Like he stays wide to the touchline, but you got to get you got to watch clips before every game because you, you never know what that player's gonna do. They're different players every game. No, we never watched clips. Yeah. Uh, they just didn't have them. I mean, we yeah. were probably on TV maybe three times a year. You mm -hmm. took your turns and that was it. Yeah. You know, we, we never had, had any... We had, we'd have a scout go and watch the game and he'd come back with a report. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, fantastic that you can, you can actually yeah. watch clips of players, yeah. you know. But interesting what you said about uh, wingers going inside a lot. Um, uh, in my day, most of them always went on the outside. Yeah. If you showed them inside, fantastic. And you, as you say, mark them until you can pass them on to people. Yeah. But it just seems to me that the, the, we do the same thing. You know, they have a right-footed player playing on the left wing yeah. for him to cut yeah. in. You know, and sometimes it's a little bit easier to read that way. Yeah. 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 Basically, we, we more concentrate on ourselves. You know, we, we did our work during the week. And say this is how we're going to play. Make sure you do your jobs. Les, you've got, uh, for instance, uh, Stevie Coppel to mark this time. You know, show him inside because he's, he's naturally good on his right side, on his on his right foot. So show him inside to other players, and you go through. You know, go through their team, pick out their strengths and weaknesses, and then work on it. I mean, it's fantastic. You can actually get clips of it and, and see other players and see what what they're not good at. You know, that was that's a definite plus nowadays. Yeah. Like if we have a home game, we'll have a meeting after training and we'll just go through what their weaknesses are, their strengths, the, the key players and what they're good at. And if it's an away game, we'll have the meeting at the hotel. But, and then individually, I get if we're having a away trip, I get clips put on my iPad so I can take it home and just watch them in the evening or when I'm, when I'm free. And also if I just watch it in the, the room there, the video analysis room. After every game, like the next day I'll come in and I'll sit down and just watch my clips, individual clips clips back and then you can see how many passes you had, how many touches you had, how many balls forward, backwards, sideways, everything. Yeah, that's incredible, you know, nothing yeah. at all, you know. Yeah. Um, you knew what you did wrong anyway and, and yeah. you know, you, you get a roasting straight away, but nothing, I mean, fantastic to watch mm. yourself back and, and see where you're going wrong. Um, that's, that's a definite plus, isn't it? Yeah. I, I sometimes think about this and I think, blimey, you know, I didn't touch the ball, mate. My <laughs> job really was to yeah. stop the stop the winger, and I don't care if I didn't have many touches. You know, if I got up tight to him yeah. and uh, didn't allow him to turn, uh, job done, really. You know, I didn't yeah. care if I only touched it three times as long as I put the winger out of the game. Yeah. Um, that was my main job. Um, but uh, yeah, it would be interesting to, yeah. to see how many times you touch the ball because sometimes you don't touch it, yeah. <laughs> especially when you're playing with Jules Best. You never got the ball back. <laughs> Yeah. But you know, we, but it's basically the same thing. He's got clips to look at. We were told about it, you know, or yeah. well, you get a bit of both. But, I think um, the principles are the same. Principles are the same. Yes, yeah. it's no, there's no difference. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, the treatment room. Um, we had one lamp as a heat lamp, and that was our treat. That was our treatment. We didn't have all the facilities they got. We didn't even have a, a physio when I first joined the club as a 16 year old in 1969. Um, uh, a coach used to do a, a physio for us. Um, training facilities, we used to train in a park and we'd be sitting having a team talk and the man would walk through your team talk with a dog, you know. So, uh, but, um, you know, fantastic and it uh, just makes the whole, the whole, your career, you know, more enjoyable and uh, more professional. I mean, we, we would still have doctors on call, you know, um, uh, if anything other than a heat lamp could cure it, you had the doctor in and uh, just take a lot longer, really. Um, players were were going out of the careers early with injuries, which nowadays could be treated, you know, with with, with the technology they got nowadays. Um, you know, I think it's the football hasn't changed. I think it's the things around it that's that's changed more. You know, we've got the new the, the hyperbaric chamber 
And if you get any knock or injury, like any swelling, just straight down there, in the kind of 100% oxygen, yeah, yeah. take all the swelling away. Yeah. And then obviously, then you come back and then the physios do all their work, like acupuncture, soft tissue, all that. Fantastic, yeah, 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 incredible. I can't even say that word, what was it? It went Hyper... Hyperbaric that's it, chamber, yeah. <laughs> I don't even know what it is. Yeah, really. Everyone just calls it the chamber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chamber of doom, no one likes to go in. <laughs> Very sometimes I have just pasta. Depends if I have like a big breakfast, I won't eat a lot for pre-match. I might just have a bit of salad and maybe a fruit salad, the chicken pasta, nothing too heavy. That's it really. I don't like really, I don't really like to eat a lot before because I feel I get heavy in my my stomach, so <laughs> I just kind of keep it light. Well, we didn't have uh, nutritionists. We didn't no. know what you know. We didn't know what to eat really. Um, I, I there's a player called Terry Bullivan who played for us. Um, and I t for his uh, debut, uh, I took him to the pie mash shop in Wandsworth Road. And we had pie mash and eels, um, and we would regularly. Then when we started coming into the ground, we, we they just used to let us get on with it. Um, and we used to have a steak at twelve o'clock. You know, a big lump of steak at twelve o'clock was our pre-match meal. And then they decided that was too much. You know, yeah. which obviously it was. And then we went on to. Um, uh, eggs on toast and beans on toast and mm. uh, that was it but we never had anyone telling us what was good or bad yeah. you know, to let you get on with it normally after you normally come into the club and we have like the recovery day and you go and get your recovery massage go on the back for 20 minutes and a light gym session fine after a game I mean, if I played well and we won then I would, you know, we'd, we'd uh, the players' bar used to be the supporters' bar, so we'd actually go in to, mm. to, to meet the supporters. And, um, you know, sometimes it can be a little bit scary, especially if you've had a, uh, had a bad game, you know, but they, they were generally all right. And, and from that, I would say 75% of my friends are Fulham supporters who I've, yeah. I've met over the years, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, we're both the same. If you play well, you're happy, and you, you know, yeah. you go out with your friends, and that. if not, you go and. And sulk, yeah. um, but you know you got to interact with supporters. You know it's their club as well, and you know just to just to get off a team bus and just walk straight in without interacting with them, I, I think is is not right. Um, so we you know we we interact all the time with supporters, yeah. and and it's a uh, and you know at the end of your career it's nice because you know people appreciate that as well. You know, um, sometimes you get stopped if you're in Kingston or like a local area that way. Fulham supporters are known. And generally after the game they come and um, stand when you're leaving the car park. Sometimes they come to the training ground. But mostly it's all like it's on um, social networks like Twitter. For example, I think that's good for the fans obviously to communicate with you and stuff. And I, me personally I do reply to them. So Well so that's, that's one way of doing it, isn't it? You know, especially with technology nowadays, I mean it's the same sort of thing, you're interacting with supporters. And you know, as I say, it's their club, you know, and and, and just taking time out with a young kid for five minutes, you know, they remember that for the rest of their life, you know. Yeah. So I, I just, I truly think the players should get involved more days, but nowadays, you know, more, a little bit more. I mean, I think uh, you know, over the generations, before me with Johnny Haynes, and, and the questions always asked, you know, um, would you be, how would you be faring today? I mean, I think players are players. You know, it, things change. I think the game's still the same, basically, maybe a little bit quicker, um, not so much tackling, but you know, I mean, the, the basics are the same. You're being able to tackle, pass the ball, head the ball, read the game. You know, it, it's no different. You're a good player. You know, um, lot to learn still at a young age. You know, you pick up tips from people around you play with good yeah. players um, but he, he would have been a, a good player in my day without a shadow of a doubt yeah. he's got all the attributes he can pass the ball got a good left foot which I never had um, for a left back amazingly yeah. I was right footed yeah. right footed left back yeah so he's bend the ball the outside of the right foot yeah. <laughs> yeah. but good when you're attacking because you can cut yeah. in and also when the ball's on the opposite side of the pitch and it's coming in you're sort of actually defending with your good foot yeah. Um, but yeah, w without a doubt, he he'd be he'd be good enough for our generation. Yeah, you have to kick a little bit more. I'm mm -hmm. afraid yeah. it's uh, a little bit tougher tackling. Yeah. Yeah. If you're seeing the old clips of uh, of Chopper Harris and uh, those sort of players, you know, that tackles used to fly. Yeah, they stay to flying. Yeah. yeah, which we like. Yeah, defenders like tackling. Yeah. You know, so uh, uh, you'd have been no ideal mm -hmm. for it. Yeah, I admit, like um, maybe a few months ago, I wasn't as good one on one. Like I'll dive in a lot. But now I'll kind of bide my time and wait for the right moment and kind of step in like when he puts his head down to the ball and I catch him off guard. And I've been doing that quite well recently. 
Um, yeah, I think, I mean, when, when I was playing, I mean, uh, talking about Bobby Moore earlier, mm. great player, um, you could be playing in six inches of mud, we'd be full of mud, mm. shirt would be black, and Bob would have a few spots up his, his yeah. socks, you know, he would never go to ground. And I learned that early on from yeah. him, you know, as soon as you go to the ground, if he's past you, you know, you're out of the game. Yeah. So, you know, I always say, stay on your feet as long as you can. Yeah. You know? yeah, like if I let one cross and I feel disappointed in myself, if he gets a cross and get frustrated, and I want to work even harder to stop him the next time. You're going to have your bad times and your good times, but just, you know, take notice of the players around you, the good players around you, how they conduct themselves, how they train, um, listen to your manager, your coaches, you know, but, you know, he's good enough and, and you know, you'll be a good player. Uh, you are a good player, but you know you'll be an even better player. And just you just live a good life, you know. If it's a short, it's a short career, and it'd be surprising how how quickly it goes, you know. And I'll say above all, enjoy it, you yeah. know, because it's a fantastic career in it, and it's yeah. a great club to be yeah. in. Yeah, it is. And I wish you luck. Thank you. Cheers. Okay. Thank you.